Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's my first look for week nine of the NFL season over on DraftKings. It's a first look, first reaction to the pricing we have on the week nine slate. We'll try to put together a lineup as we talk through it. And if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, kind of fish member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. It's the beginning of the month, so it's the best time to sign up. We got optimizers for NBA, NASCAR, NFL at the moment, ownership projections, projections, cheat sheets, Discord community. All the fun stuff can be found down below. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure most of you know this by now, but if you don't, it's daily fantasy sports simplified. Just you versus the projections. There's no sharks, honey for the mess contest, or salary cap restrictions, or anything like that. Just you versus the props they offer each and every single day. And as of right now, if you're new signing over on Prize Picks, you get a free money bonus. It's an instant deposit match up to $100, so it's free money. You want to use it to your advantage? When you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. But I think it'll be up for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as always, we'll start with the quarterback position. There's actually quite a few good ones to pick from this weekend. We'll start up top with Josh Allen, 8200 bucks, Most expensive quarterback on the slate, but he just keeps smashing. And he keeps getting really good matchups. Like since week three, he's faced Washington, Houston, KC, Tennessee, Miami. Now he gets Jacksonville. Like this is an amazing run of good matchups. And he's taking advantage of it. 40, 21, 39, 32, 29 fantasy points. His pass catching options are in great spots, whether it be Cole Beasley or Stephon Diggs. If we're looking at their prices this weekend, we have Stephon Diggs at $7,700. He should smash. Manuel Sanders at $5,600. Cole Beasley had 10 catches last week on 13 or 14 targets for $5,400. So these guys are firmly in play for me. If you do want to go the Josh Allen route, which I would definitely like to get some Josh Allen exposure. I don't think he's the way to go in cash games at that price point, especially with the large spread, but you really can't bet against Josh Allen. Kyler Murray is dealing with an ankle sprain, and even if he was fully healthy, I probably wouldn't have any interest here at nearly $8,000 versus the 49ers. kind of think that's weird pricing on Kyler Murray, to be honest. Now, the next two quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers, these guys are in the highest scoring game of the slate, least scoring to Vegas, 55 and a half point over under, with only a one point spread. So we should have a lot of fireworks, and it should be a pretty exciting game. I'm definitely looking forward to watching this one. I believe it's a late start time around 425. So if you are doing well before that game starts, be careful, because there's probably going to be a lot of ownership that's coming to get you for the late night hammer. But both guys are in fantastic spots. It's not really too scary to be their defense, especially KC. I mean, their defense has been terrible. I know the KC offense hasn't exactly been great this season. They kind of struggled to score 20 points at home versus the Giants yesterday, if you guys watched that game. But, I mean, at some point, this Chiefs offense is going to start clicking again. And hard to not like Mahomes or Rodgers below AK, which should be a very high-scoring game. And all their weapons are fantastic as well. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. Rodgers really only has Devontae Adams. He's still on the COVID list, technically, but I'm assuming he's going to get activated. I think in cash games, most people will probably go Lamar Jackson, 7300 bucks versus Minnesota. He's been having some real bad touchdown variants recently. Like, he just keeps getting vultured around the goal line by either, like, a Devonta Freeman or Latavius Murray or someone stupid. Like, I've rostered Lamar Jackson in Week 6 and Week 7. Obviously, didn't last week because he was on bye. But there are so many instances where he gets them down to the goal line, whether it be his legs or his arm. And then the one-yard line, he just gets his rushing touchdown vultured or something like that. Like, last week versus Cincinnati, he didn't even play the majority of the fourth quarter because he ended up getting benched because they were just getting blown out. But there's multiple times where he runs the ball down himself inside the five, and then someone else runs the ball in. It's quite tilting. But when that doesn't happen, we're going to see more of those games like he had versus Indy. Not quite that high, but, you know, 30-plus fantasy point games instead of 13 and 23. But even with scoring one touchdown last week versus Cincinnati, or I should say two weeks ago, he still had 23 fantasy points, and that was like in three and a fourth of a quarter versus the Bengals. Nearly 100 rushing yards. So, yeah, I like Lamar Jackson. This should be a pretty high-scoring game versus Minnesota. And if this game stays close, I mean, Lamar Jackson... Should have a very strong day, and we got to hope these touchdowns just can come back because he is really getting screwed in the touchdown department, whether it be rushing or passing recently, it feels like. But love the floor. He's probably the best way to go in cash games and just seems a bit too cheap, in my opinion. Looking down the list even more, Jalen Hurts. So versus Detroit, talking about touchdown variants, there was multiple times where Jalen Hurts got into the, like, inside the five-yard line, whether it be through his arm or his legs, and well, what do you know? Boston Scott and Jordan Howard combined for four touchdowns. Like, that's probably not going to happen again. And I'm assuming the Eagles are going to be playing from behind in this game. If that's the case, we'll probably see garbage time Jalen Hurts versus the Chargers. The matchup is not that great. But they suck versus the run, which Jalen Hurts is obviously, that's his bread and butter. Had 71 rushing yards last week. Didn't play, like, near the end of the game because they pulled the starters. Because, I don't know, just bad luck if you roster Jalen Hurts. I mean, he was the right cash game play. It's just... Sometimes Jordan Howard and Boston Scott get four touchdowns and there's nothing you can do about it. But 6700 bucks, I mean, really can't hate against Jalen Hurts. I think he's a fine cash game option if you can't quite afford Lamar Jackson. Then after that, we're kind of dumpster diving. Don't really have any interest in any of these guys. Maybe you could look at a Daniel Jones or a 
Atua versus Houston. That's not a bad price point below 6K, but for right now, we're going to leave Lamar Jackson in. Then moving on to the running back position, it's kind of a tough spot this weekend because I wouldn't say there's anybody that really stands out to me too much. Aaron Jones versus Casey obviously looks very good, but A.J. Dillon is just so involved. It doesn't really feel that great playing Aaron Jones unless we're talking a showdown slate. Dalvin Cook, I think it's a good spot versus Baltimore. They haven't exactly been great versus the run this season, although he did really struggle versus Dallas on Sunday night. But, I mean, obviously, you can't really ever bet against Dalvin Cook. Austin Eckler, great spot versus Philly. They've been terrible versus running backs this season. Dalvin Kamara, he's fine. I mean, he doesn't have Jameis Winston now. He has Taysom Hill, so it'll be an interesting situation there for New Orleans. But 8200 bucks, I'm probably going to stay away for right now. Ezekiel Elliott doesn't get a great matchup versus Denver. Joe Mixon. The Browns have been kind of stingy versus running backs this year, but he gets volume and the Bengals offenses look great. So there's a lot of ways we can go. Nick Chubb seems too cheap below 7K versus the Bengals with no Kareem Hunt. Dearness Johnson was still involved, but it's still Nick Chubb below 7K with no Kareem Hunt. So it's like, that's very enticing, but he doesn't really catch the ball. So he's never my favorite play in DraftKings because the PPR site and guys that aren't as good as Nick Chubb can just easily outscore him just because they catch the ball. Like a Cordell Patterson, like, he is nowhere near the running back that Nick Chubb is, but he's heavily involved in the passing game because he's going to get you, like, last week, five, five, nine, six, seven targets. Like, he has such a high floor past few games, 18, 14, 18, 34, 16. Like, he's a good floor guy. It's not a good matchup versus New Orleans, but the way he's utilizing the offense, we can look at, like, close to 15, 20 touches each and every single weekend with a good chunk of that being to the passing game. So I think he's a fine cash play just because of that. James Robinson's questionable. Like, I don't know, it's a bit of a mess here at the running back position. So as for right now, I'm actually going to bypass running backs, and we'll see what kind of fits at the end for me. I have a couple guys in mind, but the one guy I think is just an auto lock in this play is probably Devontae Adams, assuming he gets activated. Like, I think that's the assumption that's going to happen. But he's facing KC's defense. This is going to be a high-scoring game. I know he's had a couple of down games this year, 12 versus Chicago, 12 versus Pittsburgh. But, but this is just too good of a spot for me to pass up. I just don't see how Adams doesn't smash here. And then with that being said, I want to stack this game up as much as possible. Now, I'd love to run it back with a Chiefs option here, and Tyreek Hill is looking like the best spot here. He's the second most expensive wide receiver in the slate. We're using a lot of money at the wide receiver position if we happen to plug him in, but I mean, these guys could easily be the highest scoring players in the entire slate. I think they both absolutely smash, so we're going to try it. If we go cheap at running back and cheap at tight end and cheap at defense, maybe get a punt wide receiver three in or flex, we should be able to make it work. So Tyreek Hill, I mean, expensive, yes, but he had 18 targets on Monday. I didn't really connect on a deep ball with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes just does not look that great right now. But at some point, this offense is going to pop off once again. I would not be surprised if it happens in this game. I mean, he's going to pepper with targets. The ceiling is super high. The floor, for the most part, has been pretty high for Tyreek Hill. So we'll plug him in. Both these guys, this, I mean, absolute smash spots in the slate. They're probably both going to carry a decent amount of ownership. So at this point, I would like to still get a pass-catching option with Lamar Jackson. Now, I know since we have Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill stack here, it probably makes sense to get one of their quarterbacks in. But if we just use a cheap guy like Bateman with Lamar Jackson, that's still fine. We're still getting exposure to that KC Green Bay game. The one thing we'll have to monitor is uh, Sammy Watkins' injury status throughout the week because if Watkins is in, that is going to hurt Bateman a bit. But I still like Bateman here, especially if Watkins is out because he's only $4,000. And the last time the Ravens were on the slate, Bateman was what, $600 less expensive, and he was massive chalk. He was, like, pushing 60%, 70% ownership in cash games. He's only $600 more this time, and he's in a great spot versus Minnesota. He's had six targets the two games he's played. If Watkins is out, I mean, really hard not to like Gabe. Maybe even if Watkins is in, yes, it hurts him a bit, but he's still only $4,000. So he's going to be interesting nonetheless, and he's just a cheap pairing option with Lamar Jackson in this lineup. So for right now, let's cross our fingers at Watkins. Takes another week off and we can get another cheap Rashad Bateman, who's a good receiver. They took him early in the draft for a reason. And 4000 bucks just seems a bit too cheap. And he correlates well with Lamar Jackson in the QB spot for us. So at this point, we should probably try to find some running backs. I don't want to get left with some 4K guys that are barely going to see the field. Like, I'm not going to play a Tony Pollard or a Mark Ingram or a Samaj P. Ryan or anything like that. So at least going to have to try to be in this... Uh, Chase Edmonds and above range, which actually Chase Edmonds is at a pretty good price point, to be honest. He might be somewhat interesting in our lineup. So as much as I'd like to be able to fit in guys like Kamara, Eckler, Dalvin Cook, I just don't think that's going to really be possible in this lineup because if we plug in Dalvin Cook, we're talking 37 left per player, which, yeah, it's possible, but I don't really want to, I don't think that's going to look too great when it's all said and done. So we should probably scroll down a little bit and look at some of these guys. So maybe Nick Chubb is somewhat viable. He's $1,000 left in Dalvin Cook. So I think Chubb is certainly in play. Cordell Patterson, though. 
I actually think he might be one of the better cash game running backs on the slate. Now, that's not because of the matchup. The matchup is brutal here versus New Orleans. They're very good versus running backs. But the way he's utilized, it's like you're getting a wide receiver two RB2 mix together, like which is fine in cash games. Like He had 35 rushing yards versus Carolina, but he still scored 18.2 fantasy points. The passing work he's getting is fantastic for a running back. Five, five, nine, six, seven targets. I know he splits carries a bit, but I mean, he's still the main guy you want in this offense. No Calvin Ridley now for personal issues. So it's really just the Patterson show for the most part. And he's going to be utilized probably around 15, 20 total touches in this game. Again, the matchup sucks, but if you can just rack up receptions, that's fine for me at $6,300 on a PPR Sally DraftKings. So we'll plug him in. I just think he's a bit too cheap for the way he's using that offense. And now we have $4,000 left remaining, which we've got to factor in some cheap guys at the end here. But I don't think we're going to be able to get anything too spectacular here. We might have to go for a Miles Gaskin versus Houston. He's at least using the passing game, which is fine. Derrick Williams lost some touches to Derrick Gore on Monday night, but he still had 19 total opportunities, which not bad. Still had 17 fantasy points, six catches or six targets. He was still used heavily. It's just Derek Gore was there a little bit more than you'd like to if you're a Darrell Williams owner, that's for sure. But Chase Edmonds, I mean, that's fine. Zach Moss is there too at 53 and a bucks. Good spot versus Jacksonville, though I hate using Buffalo running backs. But Chase Edmonds, he might be the guy I'm interested in. Kyler Murray, especially dealing with an injury. Maybe they just rely on Edmonds a little bit more. They could also rely on James Conner a little bit more, but Edmonds is a good back. I wouldn't say he's a high floor guy, but he's using the passing game, which boosts his floor up a little bit. Had four targets, three catches versus Green Bay, nearly 16 fantasy points. Got into the end zone, his first touchdown of the year. Problem is, Chase Edmonds splits touches with James Conner, and James Conner is always good for a couple touchdown vultures here and there. I'm not super excited about it. If he fits at the end, sure, we can use Chase Edmonds, but I don't know. I, might, I feel like just using our tight end spot up in flex just to see what we can get the running back two spot because I'm not overly interested in any of those guys, not really just take whoever fits at the end. Looking at tight ends, Travis Kelsey, he's been pretty disappointing. I mean, he's fine at $7,000. He's a bit cheap. At some point, he's going to bounce back, but I don't really want to go that route. Plus, he's not going to fit in my lineup because we just don't have the money for Travis Kelsey. I already have Tyree Kill, so probably forego the Kelsey route. Mark Andrews, if you want to pair him up with Lamar Jackson, that's fine. Kyle Pitts, pretty much the wide receiver one in that offense now with no Calvin Ridley. Gasicki, he's pretty much a slot wide receiver. Good matchup versus Houston. Always gets targets. I think he's fine. Zach Ertz. I have to wait on Kyler Murray's status, I guess, for that. But we're going to have to go dumpster diving. Dan Arnold's probably the guy you're going to want, although it's a tough matchup versus Buffalo. But ever since he joined Jacksonville, not counting that since the game because it was his first game, 8, 5, and 10 targets. That's pretty good utilization for a guy that's dirt cheap. Although I do want a run back option with our little Raven stack here. And Tyler Conklin, $3,000 actually does not look that bad. He had 7 targets last week, 5 the week prior. He's actually utilized nicely in this offense. Like, he's not the most exciting player out there, but... For $3,000, he's actually somewhat consistent in terms of just getting work. I know he had those games of four and five points, but let's keep in mind he's $3,000, and this is the cheapest he's been since week three, so I actually don't hate Conklin here. Baltimore hasn't been great versus the hand position either this season as well. Give a big game to CJ Uzama, and they've gotten torched by Darren Waller and Travis Kelsey this season, so I, mean, I don't hate it. $3,000 is a nice run back option with Bateman and Lamar Jackson. As far as defense goes, we could probably just plug in a cheap one here. The Falcons are going to get the backup quarterback for the Saints, although I wouldn't say it's too much of a drop-off from Jameis Winston, probably. Panthers are somewhat interesting. Their defense was better earlier in the season, but facing New England, I'm not too scared of the New England offense. They're playing at home, 2600 bucks. It's fine. Like I don't care if you play a defense. Just hope they don't get absolutely demolished, which I don't think they will versus New England. That's going to leave us around $5,300 left for our last couple of spots, so... There's some mid-range wide receivers I like quite a bit, like Cole Beasley and T. Higgins are probably two of my favorite this week. T. Higgins just keeps getting targets every single week, hasn't really had a big pop-off game, but he was close to 100 yards, had a nice 54-yard catch last week, only 13.7 fancy points, but he's definitely using this offense, and the Browns have not been good versus wide receivers this season, and I'm assuming they're going to try their very best to shut down Jamar Chase. Now, that's easier said than done, but T. Higgins... Should see some softer coverage. I think he's totally in play. But Cole Beasley, man, I want some exposure to the Bills, and I don't have any right now, but he's 9-13 and 13 targets. After going a couple weeks without any work, 2-2 two and two targets versus Houston and KC, two good matchups. Well, he's had two good matchups again versus Tennessee and Miami, and he's definitely taken advantage of that. 9-13 and 13 targets, 17 catches, 21-24 and 24 fantasy points. So Cole Beasley 
just to get some Bills exposure. Don't mind that whatsoever. And that's going to leave us 5,300 bucks left for the running back spot, which I believe is actually right where Chase Edmonds is, which, yes, it is. Or if you like James Conner more, you could go that route. You have Zach Moss. That's fine. Melvin Gordon kind of grows. Boston Scott with no Miles Sanders. That's not the worst play in the world. Did have 12 carries, two touchdowns. Wasn't really used in the passing game, but the Chargers are not good versus the run. So I wouldn't hate going the Boston Scott route as gross as that sounds, but. I'll let you guys use your imagination. You can fill it out with whoever you want here. But with that being said, that'll be it for the video. So I hope it was helpful. And if it was, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, put a fish member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. And don't forget this video was sponsored by Price Picks. Does you versus the projections. And as of right now, if you're new signing over there, you can get a free money bonus. Insta buys match up to $100 when you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. That'll be it. I will stop rambling. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.